uh, Chip, what changed for you all in the second quarter defensively? It seemed like you guys really were able to kind of set the, the agenda of the game in terms of how you want it played uh, in that frame. Uh, yeah, we had some really big plays from a few different guys uh, out there on the defensive end from, uh, you know, K. Rich had a couple steals. Uh, Jay Will had active hands, got some deflections that turned into steals, you know, including other guys as well uh, who made big plays. And, you know, we were able to kind of turn around and, you know, make some offense out of those, which is great. And, uh, you know, I feel like that really, uh, you know, set the tone for the rest of the game. Just a bit ago, Mark was saying that your process on offense has been really good over the last, you know, couple months, just continuing to blend all of the different things you do, pop, roll, you know, pass, shoot, drive, all that stuff. Uh, how have you felt yourself um, being more decisive and getting to those decisions very quickly? Uh, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm reading and reacting very well. Uh, I kind of know what to do in every different instance. Um, you know, obviously I'm not going to be perfect. Sometimes I'm going to do the wrong thing, but uh, for the most part, I have a pretty good feel going right now. Um, and, you know, as we see more new things, more new adjustments, I'll have to learn more, uh, you know, but I'm just trying to kind of improve at what I know to do uh, right now. After the Spurs win, you guys are back first in the West. I just wonder if you're giving any energy to this at all, if you're even peeking at the, the standings, like how much you've, you know, thought about these realities that could pan out over the weekend? Um, honestly, we're just trying to control what we can control right now. Uh, you know, we have one more game left, and that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, you know, we got practice tomorrow. We're going to focus on getting better tomorrow, working on what we got to work on, and then, uh, you know, everything else that happens, uh, you know, that's out of our control, we're going to figure out as it comes. Um, but we're going to we're going to focus on what we can control for now. Anybody else? Yeah, sure. Let him go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Did you want to? Well, go ahead. Let's go. Sorry. Real quick. One more. I, got I was you. just curious. You played 81 games. You have one more game. Uh, how meaningful is it to you to play all 82 this season? <sighs> it means a lot, man. Um, <laughs> Going from, yeah, take a seat, buddy. I got a couple words. Um, without like going into the whole preach and everything, but it means a lot. Obviously, uh, I didn't play any last year, uh, so getting to play all of them. I didn't necessarily come into the season like I have. This is my main goal in the season to play every game because there's so many things that can happen. And like I just said to him, like focus on what I can control and like what's right in front of me, but. Um, you know, especially as it's been closing in, um, you know, and I have the opportunity to play all 82. It definitely means something to me. Uh, you know, I've put in a lot of work, uh, you know, to get my body to a point where, um, you know, I can play all 82. Uh, you know, obviously I still have a long ways to go, but, you know, I also feel like I owe it to, you know, my teammates and all the people who helped me throughout last year from medical staff to the coaches to, you know, go out there and, and be out there. Uh, you know, and try to help us win games. Uh, you know, I owe it to them to do that. And, uh, you know, I owe it to myself for all the hard work that I did. So, uh, you know, it definitely means a lot. Thank you, Chet. <sighs> Nick Gallo, KC Thunder. Uh, Jalen, just the, the way Chet played again tonight and the physicality that you all showed as a team as well, playing through contact so often, um, how do you think that that's grown and developed over the course of the season, your ability to do that? Uh, I think a lot of it is just understanding how the game is getting played and kind of called throughout the whole season. So I thought we've done a really good job of adjusting to that. Um, the first time we played them, too, it was really physical, and we didn't really match that. So I think we did a good job kind of course correcting that. And um, I think that's just an adjustment that we have keep having to make on the fly, and we've done a good job of it. Uh, just, I wonder if you've given any energy because be, because of the Spurs win. Now you guys are top of the West again. I wonder if you've given any energy just to the you know however many realities there might be playing out over the weekend. Just where you could end up, who you could be playing, and just how much mystery there is to that. Nope, not at all. Larry, not even a little bit. Is there, you know, does the level of you know uncertainty make you uncomfortable at all? No, nah. I would love to give you a more detailed answer. I really don't be paying attention to it, especially this year. It's been moving around so much. I could care less. Dub, I'd imagine that you guys aren't just like cramming for a test the last second, preparing for the playoffs. 
throughout the season you're probably just getting prepared and like learning lessons to get ready for the playoffs. What do you think you guys have learned the most over the course of the season, and when did that really start as like a reality of like we're more than likely going to play in the postseason? Um, I think we've been given that like attention maybe this past like month more just because the way our schedule has been and I think just kind of attacking it that way I think what's made us good this year is that we haven't given our like given into the whole playoff thing and just trying to compete every night so there's not much of a jump when you know you go into the playoffs and we kind of have to try and turn a turn a switch so in regards to that I think a lot of that is just kind of our prep going into each game um you know, you look at January, which was our hardest month. We're trying to play every single game as hard as we can. So we kind of don't have to try and just turn it on when it comes to playoffs. So I think that's been our biggest thing, um, just playing every game like it is. And then when we get to that point, we kind of know, have a good feel for it. You guys have increased your win total 16 games last year, 16 games this year, which is really unusual. What, what have you seen that have been the factors that have led to that? Mm. Chet is one of them. Uh, I thought we played really good defense uh, last year. Permanent rivalry just didn't have you know the necessary size, I think, to alter shots. So uh, I think our defense has really improved in that point. And I think guys are just more and more comfortable playing with each other. You know, we have a. Uh, I think for the most part, we almost have the exact same team. So guys are getting used to playing with each other, and um, I think a lot of it's just trust. We understand what we want to do and how we want to play on a nightly basis. Um, so I think when you kind of combine all those elements, um, I think we've gotten in like a good rhythm as far as that goes. Um, I don't think we've really been focused on anything but improving each game and just t trying to take it one game at a time. You know, I think that gets lost because you play so many games and, you know, you kind of look some games down the road. Maybe people think they don't matter, but I think we've done a good job of trying just to make sure every game matters and try and go out there and just improve. And we've done a really good job of that. You guys really aren't paying attention to the playoff picture, but have you talked to guys like Shea and Lou about how the playoffs are just different, you know, game-wise? Uh, yeah, just I think obviously you know everybody the stakes are higher. You know, everybody wants to win. Um, you know, like I said, it's easy in the regular season to kind of take games for granted, but you know, obviously every game matters, and um, it's just obviously it's an elevated level of play. But I think we've done a really good job of just trying to have that same kind of focus and preparation no matter who we're playing, um, especially this past two weeks. Um, so we'll see. Got the jersey on. Uh, you, Kenrich, J. Will, got to get your, your own jerseys from the fan that created them. Just talk about how cool of a moment that was and what you think about the jersey. Oh, uh, it's dope. Um, I like the jersey a lot, and it fits, so she did a good job with that. Um, but I think it just shows kind of the connection we have with the fan base and um, – I think just how much fun it is playing here. Um, so yeah, we really enjoy interacting with um, just kind of the fan base. And I said this kind of earlier this year, you don't know what, you know, people are doing to have to get to these games. And, you know, some people are making these hour drives to get to the games. And you see people that went to the blue game yesterday, come back and support us today. So just trying to give love back to the city. And um, she took her time out of her day to make three big jerseys. So. Um, you know, just thought I'd show love, but it's always cool to interact and just be a part of the fan base. I've uh, played a couple games just missing the, the most of the road trip. How's your ankle feel? How you feel getting going to the playoffs? Getting better and better. Um, I think it'll be good to have the break just to you know get back to 100%. Uh, especially this time of year, nobody's nobody's 100%. But um, I'm in a good place uh, today. I had a lot more kind of juice and pop coming back into my feet. So um, just trying to take it day by day. Uh, I think it was good to hop back into some of these games and just kind of get my feet back. You know, I haven't missed that that extended amount of time, I think, in my career yet. So, uh, And it was kind of a weird spot because we had that whole break, so I really couldn't come back to kind of get treatment and stuff like that um, and trying to just see if I would be able to play, you know, on the road trip. So I think now that I'm in a more stable area, I think my foot's kind of getting back to where it needs to be. Fans have started noticing, I guess, um, your appreciation for the older Thunder teams. Did you grow up like a fan of the Thunder, watching those Durant, Russ teams? And then the fans have been really loud, but how excited are you to see sort of Oklahoma City home Thunder basketball with the fans going crazy? Um, yeah, so I was a Kobe fan, so I think they eliminated the Lakers one of the years I was watching, but I, I was a big 
what was that 2012 maybe? yeah right yeah um yeah i was i was big on westbrook just because the way he played and uh, just how hard he played every night. Obviously, that's something that still kind of holds true with us now and what we try and accomplish. So um, just give him respect to that team and kind of put put this whole place on the map just as far as basketball goes. And, um, you know, we draw a lot of comparisons to it now. So I think that's pretty cool and just kind of full circle. And then, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how loud it gets. You know, obviously, that's something that everybody kind of remembers from that team too. So it um, should, be, should be exciting. I'm happy that I get to be a part of that kind of coming back. Part of that group that was at the blue game last night. What did that mean to you to kind of support the organization and kind of who spearheaded that effort to get out there? Um, just um, just the team going. I think that's just our team. Like it really wasn't even coordinated. It was just um, making sure guys were somewhat on time. You know, we're NBA players, so we're usually late to everything. Um, but yeah, it's just fun to support the guys. You know, a lot of them come up and play with us and just trying to show our appreciation for them. You know, obviously like Lindy and and Oos and O played that game and obviously come back and play tonight too so just trying to show up and show love love to them for you know what they do kind of goes under the radar so um just trying to show support when we can obviously we can't even watch a lot of their games so in person at least so when we're able to go it's always cool to be able to go out anybody else night nick gallo casey thunder uh, aaron you really seem to be a catalyst in that second quarter when you all um, outscored him by 10 and, and really got your style of play going. What did you feel out there on the floor in terms of being able to uh, turn the game? Um, I think defensively, we just kind of ramped up our physicality um, and it led to, you know, a lot of steals in the open court, transition opportunities, and uh, I think just kind of picking up the pace got us playing a little fast and got some uh, advantages for us and we were able to kind of capitalize on those. When you talk about ramping up the physicality, what does that actually look like in practice to do that and calibrate that with, with the way the officiating is and um, you know, how to actually get that into the game? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, dependent upon, you know, the opposing team as well. They kind of come, came into the game and I think their first play was a post up and uh, they were trying to, you know, kind of post up throughout the game. And uh, once we just kind of, you know, made adjustments to kind of fight the post, not allow them to get entries so easy, um, you know, being on the same page as a team on the defensive end, we were able to just kind of, you know, make them have to play away from that um, and, and find other ways to, you know, create advantages. And that's where um, I think we were just kind of able to, you know, cause a little bit of havoc, get, get uh, you know, deflections and, and opportunities on the other side. Aaron, do you remember the last time you played a full quarter just that early in the game? I don't remember <laughs> last time I played any quarters. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't remember any of that. What, what kind of vote of confidence is that for you? Um, I mean, just just kind of you know gives you a sense of understanding that you know you're out there and and you're contributing in a, in the right way. Um, you know, the more that you know you're kind of out there, the more you feel as though you know coach and the players around you trust you. Um, and so I mean, if I play a full quarter. You know, it's it's definitely a sense of confidence that you know I'm doing the right things and I'm I'm, I'm playing the right way. So, yeah. And after the the Spurs win, you guys are just at the top of the West again. Are you giving any energy to this whole seeding thing? Have you thought about it? Are you are you reacting at all to these other games? Um, I mean, oh, I think the top three spots are really you know one game apart. So you see it all and and you look at it. But uh, as a team, I don't think we're worried about it. Um, we're trying to prepare ourselves for, you know, postseason play, not so much um, seeding or, you know, who we're going to go up against, just more so making sure that we're sharp and, uh, you know, ready to go regardless of who our opponent is. P preparing yourself, though, is that harder with, you know, how many realities there are? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we have a, a group of guys who understand our, our goal and understand, you know, what it takes to be good. And um, guys just kind of have the same mentality going into practice and approaching every game every day, which is let's get better, focus on, on us, and continue to just kind of grow in that aspect. Anybody else? Thank you. Nick Allo, KC Thunder, uh, Mark, you guys seem to really make this game into your style in the second quarter. Anything that happened there that you really noticed as some like catalyst moments for that? Uh, I just was really impressed with our physicality force to start the game. Uh, obviously, we talked about the last time we played them. Uh, they took the fight to us. 
uh, and it was a good lesson for us. I thought we we grew from that game, uh, and I thought our guys, you know, remembered that coming into tonight and understood the level that we needed to play to in order to beat that team, even without their guys, the you know, physical players that um, try to bring the fight to. And I thought our guys stood up to that tonight. Chet, you know, always kind of has that level of tenacity to him, but uh, there were some plays where he really played through contact, had a big in one down low. Um, what have you seen from him as the season has gone on just in terms of continuing to execute through the physicality uh, in his rookie year? Yeah, he's done a great job. I thought tonight, again, he had, you know, for a good stretch of time now, if you just look at his process, he's been very decisive. Um, he's played with a great understanding uh, of how dynamic he can be as a uh, pop, roll, drive, shoot. You know, his balance between those things has just smoothed over time and um, – He's playing a very predictable style that uh, fits in with the rest of the system, and he's done a great job. I thought he had that again tonight. Mark, just on a similar note, um, Chet, just throughout the year, I just think back to, like, the, the the Warriors trip in Golden State where, like, they would be trying to be switching Chris Paul on him um, tonight. I think, you know, one of those actions Nick is talking about is just, you know, the, the drop step on Chris Livingston. Like, how have you seen him progress in terms of, you know, recognizing and then maybe abusing switches throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, he gets switched because of how dynamic he is on the perimeter. And, um, you know, we've had to kind of build solutions in, you know, to that as a team. Uh, it's a team level uh, and also him individually. You know, and I think both of those things have improved over time. We've uh, gotten better at understanding how to maximize him against the switching uh, and looking for him against smaller guys. And he's done a better job of understanding how he can – uh, keep the defense off balance and play the cat and mouse game, you know, in the pick and roll game when he's getting switched. And, and Aaron is a guy we've talked about um, for different reasons all year, um, just in the way that he can, you know, he's bendable in his role, just all of that. But for a guy like that, some, I mean, he's had DMPs. He, there are games where he might not play a ton. To to play that entire second quarter tonight to go for 19, just have you ever coached a guy that's just – so able to you know slip into that role when when needed um i think you know no disrespect to him but there's a lot of guys on this team that you know are very adaptive uh to the roles that we move them around in um even just their rotate you know they don't they don't know night to night when they're going in when they're coming out k rich is like that i joe's like that jay will's like that um case wallace is like that you know and even the starters you know we're shifting their rotations around you know based on the opponent based on how we think we can maximize advantages. So it's an adaptive team. He obviously is a great example of that. He's had, you know, great uh, moments. And, you know, he just sees a punching bag. He just eats punches. And um, nothing really throws him off. And it's made him incredibly mentally tough. And he performs under all circumstances, any weather. The infinite realities, no. Just um, for 81 games, we've uh, focused on the same stuff, and we're just going to keep doing that all the way through the finish line here. Walked off the floor. Did you see that they're here, that the Spurs came back to beat the Nuggets, and you know, obviously uh, a game that impacts you, and then what was your reaction to hearing that? It's pretty shocking. Yeah, Matt told me. Um, he said this is all they're going to want to talk about, and you guys are really delivering on that. So... Um, you know, I don't have much of a reaction. We're just we got to run through the finish line. It was more entertaining than the fourth quarter of this one. What's that? It was definitely more entertaining than the fourth quarter. Not for me. <laughs> I was I was locked in on the fourth quarter. I'll hit you on some uh, basketball. Some, looks like that second quarter when you kind of widen out the lead, you get a lot of hands on ball deflections. I think Gordon got one that led to a steal, another that kept a three from being completed. And this looked like guys were really getting their hands on, on balls tonight. Yeah, I thought our physicality tonight, our pressure uh, was really, really good. You know, Middleton's a guy you got to play tight even when you do. Obviously, he can can shots, and uh, Beasley is a guy you got to play tight. Connaughton, you got to play tight. And so pressure was important tonight. Um, and like I said, the last time we played this team, they taught us a lesson, you know, in terms of their physicality and how they brought the fight to us. And I thought the way that our team started the game and, and the energy we were able to drum up you know, especially in that first half uh, with our physicality, our intensity, our energy um, was really impressive. It was a nice step forward for us tonight. Before the season, 
Sam talked about how unlikely it is to increase your win total by 16 games like you did last year. Tonight, you've achieved the same thing this year. Like what, what goes into these like big exponential jumps that have happened two years in a row? You know, I think the big exponential jumps come from small incremental steps, you know, and I talk all the time about stacking and we really are trying to live that out. You know, we're just trying to have a good day um, in the day that's in front of us and, you know, have a good possession in the possession that's in front of us, a good game in the game that's in front of us and just be very present in the process of improving and in the process of competing. And when you do that, it doesn't guarantee, you know, big jumps, but it does guarantee that you maximize your capabilities, which is, you know, ultimately what I think the goal of any team uh, is. And, you know, we've done a nice job of that, you know, for not only two years, but even before that, I thought we started that process and built that mindset that's now paying some dividends for us. So um, it's really as simple as that, you know, we're just very present in the moment. And then Lindy last night played really well for the blue comes in, it's still kind of playing well for you guys. Like what, what do you think when you see Lindy playing in these two different situations back to back nights? Well, he, I thought, you know, he was probably the best guy on the court last night. You know, yeah. I thought he was outstanding. And, um, you know, Joel asked about Wiggins. I th Lindy's in that category and it's just not in this season has not gotten the same pop mainly because of opportunity, you know, not because of him. Um, but because of the way the season's unfolded. Um, but he's he's kind of like doing the invisible work right now, and, you know, he's he's putting one foot in front of the other. I have a lot of respect for how he's handled. He's got a lesser role this season than last season, despite being a significantly better player. Um, and a lot of guys are like that. That's part of being on a good team. But uh, he's just kept his head down. Um, I really enjoyed watching him play last night. He played with a lot of confidence. He gave that team a lot of jolt. You know, they were coming off a really tough travel. I thought a lot of guys had heavy legs, and he he really ignited them. So, um, like I said, a lot of respect for him. Anybody else? Yep, thanks.